ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on this beautiful Wednesday, September 9th. Supposed to get to 88 or 89 degrees today. Should just be a beautiful, gorgeous day. A little cooler than uh, yesterday, Tuesday, a little bit warm. But uh, I hope you are enjoying uh, your uh, post it's a short week with Labor Day, post uh, Labor Day fun week. Uh, Skip Dillon is here. How you doing, Skip? Good. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, glad you're on. We're going to talk with Skip about all kinds of different stuff because he is a widely varied in of uh, he is a person of widely varied interests. Yeah, that's we true. May, we may talk <laughs> a little hunting. We may talk a little officiating. We may talk a little high school sports. May talk a little uh, baseball. Who knows? Yeah, bring it all. Bring it all. That's what. That's that's the attitude I like. Yeah. All right, you want your bed talk with Bruce Dickey? Let me tell you what's going on out in the area today. Actually, I uh, searched and searched all over for Wednesday, September 9th in the uh, community events calendars and. Uh, I came up empty. Scared. Not a whole lot happening. <laughs> Not a thing. <laughs> Not a thing going on on uh, Wednesday, September 9th. So I do have a couple of uh, national days today. Actually, uh, this is a good food one. This is National Wiener Schnitzel Day. September 9th celebrates a traditional Austrian dish with National Wiener Schnitzel Day. This uh, breaded recipe typically made with veal and actually a law... It, in Austria, requires the dish to be made strictly with veal. Chefs make Wiener schnitzel by tenderizing a thin slice of veal and lightly salting it and breading it, deep frying it in clarified butter. The term Wiener schnitzel was first used in the early 1830s, uh, though similar recipes did appear later. You serve it with a slice of lemon, also uh, rice, mashed potatoes, roasted or french fries have become popular side dishes to a Wiener schnitzel. When's the last time you had a good uh, Wiener schnitzel? <laughs> well, I was getting ready to say, I'd like to try that, and it's going to be lunchtime here shortly. Is, is it, if you right. can get that ready, that'd uh, be fine. Uh, I would think uh, the last time I had Wiener schnitzel was at the, the Gerst House over in Evansville, mm. you know, have down on Franklin. That's always a yeah. wonderful place to go and, uh, and very tasty meal. Although a lot of people don't make it with uh, veal, they make it with pork. So you can a lot of folks will hammer down the yeah. pork tenderloin to make v Wiener schnitzel or pork loin. So there you go. Uh, what else is today? Today is National Teddy Bear Day. On September 9th, National Teddy Bear Day honors the history of, of uh, one of childhood's favorite toys. We all have, have all had a special cuddly teddy bear as a child. Some of us may even still have our teddy bears from childhood. No matter what kind of teddy bear you had, the day is perfect time to celebrate your childhood friends. Of course, in 1902, American President Theodore Roosevelt refused to shoot a bear cub while hunting in Mississippi. Actually, this might be this yeah. might go well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This might go well today. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna shoot a cub. You don't. Yeah, no, to. no. But mama, maybe. Yeah. Mama, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get we'll get to all that in just a little bit. But uh, but yeah, Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt refused to shoot a bear cub while hunting in Mississippi. The incident made national news. Clifford Berryman published a cartoon of the event in the Washington Post on November 16, 1902, and the caricature became an instant classic. Uh, the uh, cartoon uh, inspired the teddy bear, and uh, of course, the bear, the Bearman cartoon of Roosevelt and the Cub inspired New York store, store owner Morris Mitchum. He uh, created the new toy and even had a name in mind. He uh, said, "A teddy bear." It's gonna, he wrote. President Roosevelt asked permission to name the new toy the teddy bear, and President Roosevelt said, "Sure, I got no problem with that." Since the advent. Of the teddy bear, there ever been all kinds of famous uh, Muppet characters and all kinds of things. So, uh, how can you observe Teddy Bear Day today? Well, I don't have any idea. <laughs> 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 Maybe dust off your old one that you had as a kid. You don't or still have it, do you? No, I don't. I don't have any idea where my teddy bear yeah. would be. I, I, you know, we had, I had, I had a bunch of uh, stuffed animals, so I wouldn't. I never really had a teddy bear. 
Uh, well, I think I had one, but it was many, many years ago. And I do have a blue teddy bear that we uh, that my dog uses. So <laughs> oh, yeah. my dog has a favorite teddy bear. Yeah. So I'll go uh, pet my dog, and uh, yeah. and she'll enjoy uh, Teddy Bear Week. One other thing, what is this week? This is National Biscuits and Gravy Week. During the second week of September, celebrates the homespun Southern way to start the day. It's a good reason to sit down to a hot breakfast and start the work day on a full stomach. Biscuits and gravy is a popular American breakfast, especially in the South. Some say its emergence took place immediately after the Revolutionary War, once the U.S. pulled away from Britain. Food shortages set in. Notably, those shortages hit the South particularly hard, so people came up with a good way to load up on carbs before going out to work. So there you go. That's a I got a couple of different... Uh, I, there's the one. I Look at that picture over there. That's a good-looking plate. Oh, yeah. I can take some of that. I had, uh, and I did not realize... Had I had I realized it, I would have made a notation to people that I was had breakfast with this week, and I had biscuits and gravy on both Saturday and yesterday on uh, Monday yeah. or on, on uh, yeah two, on Labor Day. So yeah, here I am already celebrating yeah. the week. You started early. I started early, so I am always uh, glad to do that. What's going on on television? And what do you want to see on TV, ladies and gentlemen? Cardinals aren't playing today. They've got a doubleheader on Tuesday and a doubleheader on Thursday. They gave them Wednesday off, so that's good. White Sox are in Pittsburgh taking on the Pirates. That's on Fox Sports 1, Channel 610 at 6.05 tonight. And a doubleheader is going to be on MLB Network, Channel 599. Uh, Kansas City Royals at Cleveland. Danny Duffy versus Carlos Carrasco, followed by the Dodgers taking on the Diamondbacks. Uh, Clayton Kershaw on the mound. He takes on uh, Taylor Clark. Doubleheader in the NBA as well. Game six, the Raptors taking on the Celtics. Celtics lead that series three games to two. That's on ESPN at 540. Followed on ESPN later on, the Denver Nuggets versus the LA Clippers. And finally, uh, it'll be game two, the Islanders versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. That's Skip Dillon. <laughs> I'm Bruce Dickey. We'll be back on Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right after these words. Do stick around. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Briscoe Surplus Sales on the northeast edge of Flora is your one-stop do-it-all shop. Looking for rugged boots and footwear from great brands like LaCrosse, Rocky, and Carolina? They're there. How about top-notch small engine parts and service? Briscoe Surplus Sales has it. Whether you're wiring your switches or switching your wiring, Briscoe Surplus Sales has the solution and the know-how to help you get the job done right the first time. Briscoe Surplus Sales, your one-stop do-it-all shop. At Clay City Banking Company, we're all on the same team, regardless of zip code. At home, work, school, or across the country, you can be part of our team with our cutting-edge mobile banking products. From your hand, you can check balances, transfer money, make deposits, and pay bills. Looking for a loan? We've got you covered with our mortgage, agriculture, commercial, and consumer loans. Join our team today. Clay City, Floor, Louisville, and Fairfield Banking Companies. We're the hometown banks, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. My name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at bruced at wabash.net if you are a member of of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching.
It is all things new at Zimdar's heating, air conditioning, and appliance repair. We have a new line of heating and cooling equipment and new technicians. Our new equipment line offers 24 months free financing and excellent warranty coverage. Our experienced service technicians can provide you with quality service and repairs on all brands of HVAC equipment. Zimdar's has been serving Clay County and the surrounding areas for over 23 years. The employees of Zimdar's are here to help, so call local and call Zimdar's. Make Carnaby Square in downtown Fairfield your fashion leader. We're the little boutique with the big inventory of beautiful, trendy outfits and clothing in a wide array of your favorite name brands. And don't forget our large selection of jewelry and accessories. Carnaby Square is Southern Illinois' largest dealer of Brighton. At Carnaby Square, we take pride in our one-on-one, -on -one knowledgeable customer service and look forward to helping you create your own special look. Plus, always free gift wrapping. Find endless gift ideas 24-7 at CarnabySquare.com and on our Facebook page. Shop the fashion leader in downtown Fairfield. Fairfield, Carnaby Square. Oh, I, I have cool. not heard this story. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize that you're wrestling for Flora, right? No, no, I wrestled Benton. Benton, okay. I grew up in Benton. Yeah. Welcome back, folks, to a big talk with Bruce Dickey. Talking with Skip Dillon. Uh, I had not did not realize you were a wrestler. I had yeah. no idea. But if, you know, you're not. You're not the tallest person yeah. in the world. So. I'm vertically challenged. Yeah. <laughs> and going to high school in Benton, back when you would have been going to high school yeah. in Benton, they had some really good teams. Yeah. You'd, you'd probably need to be really good to play on. Yeah. Tremendous basketball program down there with Rich Heron. And, yeah. uh, uh, and actually his son – his son played for him, Rodney, and oh, really? in the same age as I, and about the same size as I am. But his basketball handling the basketball level was a lot more than mine, and I like that. I, I'm kind of a contact sport guy, so I kind of like that that uh, wrestling. Too. Let me ask you a little bit about. I mean, because I I know your age relatively closely, and I know, and so you probably graduated from a, a Benton in nineteen seventy. One or two or something. Seventy-seven. Oh, I don't know your age closely enough. You've been <laughs> retired longer than I thought, and I just, I just, I yeah. just took it down. Okay, so you don't know Doug Collins? Oh, yes, I do. You do know yeah, Doug he, Collins? He was in seventy-two, or no, uh, but a little before 69, that, sixty-nine. Yeah. And but um, actually, when I was in college, uh, the. Um, Benton had a has a park district, and yeah. they were running programs where they had uh, the gym open the first part of the morning until uh -huh. about eleven, and yeah. we had programs going on. And I, uh, being a physical education sure. health major and stuff, I was hired, and I ran that type of stuff there at the at the school and we used the high school gym and that's the off time for the nba right but doug was home he would want to come in and and train that was when he was uh, on the sixers uh, yeah philadelphia 76ers correct and he would he would come in and work out in the gym a bunch and and uh and actually when he was playing for the sixers they played up uh, st louis and uh, like I said, I was good friends with uh, Rodney Heron, which mm -hmm. is Coach Heron's son. Yeah. And uh, we went up to uh, in the old Checker Dome at St. Louis, and they played the Kansas City Kings up there. Now you really date yourself. Yeah, exactly. Talk about the Checker Dome. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, – what a, what a building. Yeah. What and a building. So uh, went up there and, and watched him play and stuff, and so it was a good time. Were but you yes, able to I talk did. to him before or after the game or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. And then, See, and then like I said, then, in the summer – At you know, that time oh, – go ahead, finish. In the summer, like I said, he came in a, every day and did a lot of work, and he was it was fun because he he had several people you know, they knew kind of got on his routine that yeah. he was coming in, and but he would just work his tail off. Oh and, yeah, and, and it was unreal of what he did. And in that hot gym, in the hot gym there, yeah, exactly. Did okay. I gotta ask. I, I I've got to ask because seventy uh, sixers were my favorite team back in the seventies uh, and eighties. I've, I've kind of quit following mm -hmm. basketball, call or pro basketball, whenever I went to college because yeah. I, I started just concentrating on Illinois and, right. and, and that kind of stuff. But 
from about 1977 to 1985 or so, uh, I was the, say, the biggest Sixers fan yeah. you could find, other than probably people in Benton. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whenever you went to the game, did you get a chance to go down and meet him and or any of the other teammates? Well, we the, we talked like? to him uh, uh, afterwards a little bit, but just before they they wouldn't allow us on into the locker room and such at that time. So. So you uh, didn't meet Dr. J. That's oh, you, yeah. you realized yeah. that was getting to the. I know. Question. I know. Dr. J. Maurice Cheeks. Those are. Those Dar- yeah. Daryl Dawkins, Dawkins. Caldwell yeah. Jones. Yeah. yeah. We're on that nice team. Ones. Yeah, and I was kind of like you. I I followed the NBA. Yeah. And then I don't at all anymore because, yeah. uh, well, they don't play basketball anymore. I'm not sure why they have referees there because, <laughs> I mean, ESPN even did a thing when they showed many clips uh, of traveling, yeah. you know, and they would actually number the steps and they never took a dribble and got up to as many as seven. And <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, to me, it's it's more of a joke that way and it's, it's not real basketball. As an official, I suspect you probably do occasionally take offense whenever you see James Hart. Well, you yeah. see now, that's the thing. Right now, the uh, the the main one of the main shots in the NBA is the step back three, mm-hmm. which, for all intents and purposes, is you step forward and and your the defender falls off and, and you jump yeah, back yeah. And, and you take the three point shot. And they're traveling every time, aren't they? Yeah, it pretty seems much. Like. For the, a lot of mo, a lot of them are. Yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. And I was I was watching uh, uh, a college game, uh, and this was several years ago. But um, you know how okay, running down in the end of the quarter or something, or into the half in yeah. college, and they're out going to take the last shot, right, and right. you're guarding me, and I'm standing out there, and we're just and you know how they'll wipe their shoes. Sure. Well, With this the, guy was this guy was holding the basketball. He picked up his right foot, wiped it off, switched the basketball to the other, picked up his left foot, wiped it off. He changed pivot feet. You can't you do can't that. You can't do that. Nothing was called. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, uh, you know. I, that was a college game. Yeah, that was a college game. Well, you see that? Uh, yeah. Uh, I like the one. Did you see the one where uh, uh, LeBron, Le- LeBron James was walking the ball up? Uh, it was walking the ball, and he went from – he basically yeah. picked up the ball, yeah. was shouting the play to his teammates, right, and and walked from the the free throw line, the the opposite free throw line, right. to the across the half, half line, court. yeah, before yeah. he before he stopped and started dribbling yeah. again. Yeah, I, it was on the ESPN had highlighted that yeah. one actually. Yeah, uh, that, 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 that's, <laughs> that's good. Well, they see, I did not know. So you didn't get it. They didn't let you meet any of the other yeah. guys. Well, I, in passing, but we didn't get to. Chum up with them a little bit, you know. But you, could, you, but you did. You can say that you were you. You shook hands. Oh, yeah, shake yeah. hands with Doctor J. High five as he's going by. Him. Yeah. Oh my, so, that yeah. is so cool. Oh yeah, it, it was it was a nice experience. It oh, sure yeah. was. So you see, so so you might be able to talk if you if you spoke with the, uh, Doug Gollins, he would know who you are now. Yeah, yeah. If you spoke yeah. with Doctor J. Nah. Julius Irving, he wouldn't. Nah, he'd say skip who. <laughs> And actually, a little tidbit: uh, uh, Doug Collins's grandmother lived just a block from where I lived in Benton. Oh, really? Yeah, just down the street, one block. I got to Okay, since we're since uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, we fully had we had a list of. So I've got <laughs> a gigantic list of things that I was going to talk about today with Skip Dillon. But since we're talking about Benton, did you get a chance to know the Malkovich family or, or uh, John Malkovich? Not right? John, but he had younger. There are, actually, I, I know a couple. Then, of, I know a couple Malkovich people in Benton now, mm-hmm. or Matt Malkovich. Matt, I yeah. believe, that I think he's moved to Florida, but uh, he was a, a, a nephew or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John, there's right? there's a lot of relation there. Uh, did have a younger sister that was in was a year or two years behind me, maybe uh, that was in my sister's class, but uh, don't know him. No, so, but <laughs> watch all of his movies. <laughs> All right, one other question then. If we're talking about Benton, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
But didn't George Harrison's sister yes. live in Benton yeah. for a while? Did you ever get a chance to meet? I, no, I, I, George not. Harrison's too young for you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and I, he he only went to Benton like in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. But I, and I and I presume once George Harrison got rich, his sister moved out of Benton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, well, you see. Now, well, now the other thing we can throw in there, and other somebody's a little history buff. The yeah. last person to be hung in the state of Illinois was Charlie Berger. Right. And it was there on the Benton, just off the Benton Square. Right. Well, my grandfather, great-grandfather, excuse me, uh, was the undertaker. And we have the uh, records from his records from the funeral home where and the, he documented all that stuff where he had buried, uh, embalmed, did all that stuff. And Charlie Berger pronounced him dead, you know, and all that type of stuff. No kidding. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff. They... That has the rope just uh, sold uh, five or ten years yeah. ago for, but that sold for like fifteen or twenty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, uh, this kind of stuff might it, be worth. A, and you know, there actually in the, where the old city hall used to be, mm-hmm. the old police station, they've converted that into a the museum. A museum that has sections with George Harrison, Doug Collins, and Charlie Berger all in it. So it, it is a worthwhile thing for people to go see. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't realize the Charlie Charlie Burger Museum had had a Doug Collins section. Yeah, yeah. They, they kind of made they made use of that whole building. So. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I got to tell you, we're going to talk about all kinds of different things when we. I, and I didn't realize we were going. to. I forgot about you being from Benton. Uh, so that, that's all fun because you and I have talked about it before, and I just forgot about it. Uh, you're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. That's Skip Dillon. I'm Bruce Dickey. When we get back. We're going to talk about things you might care about, too. (laughs) We'll be back right after this. Do stick around. I'm a bunch of wind. And just like your stomach after that strip mall sushi, I'm a bit unpredictable. Let's redecorate. (laughs) What's the matter, Tanya? I thought you loved being spontaneous. And if you got the wrong home insurance coverage, I might break the bank, too. Forget all state. Mayhem is everywhere, so get an all state agent. In Salem, call Brandy Drinkpool. Get ahead of the game at Carter Athletic Academy, where the goal is to transform you into the best young athlete you can be. Train for top performance in football, volleyball, soccer, baseball, and softball. Professional private lessons and clinics are always available with Carter Athletic Academy's expert training staff. Carter's exclusive hit track system brings skill development as well as exciting gameplay to batting cages. Plus, the Academy is the perfect spot for your special event or celebration. The Carter Athletic Academy in Fairfield. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at bruced at wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. Shy Diesel Service Company is your anything diesel full service center and fuel injection shop. Shy Diesel offers the quickest turnaround times to get you back on the road. Shy Diesel can service any diesel engine from agricultural, construction, heavy duty truck, and automotive. Let Shy rebuild your pump, injectors, or turbos. Need custom fuel lines? Shy has you covered. With a drive in service, they offer a variety of services, including oil changes, engine rebuilds, DOT inspections, and DPF cleanings. For unmatched quality, think Shy Diesel Service Company. Anything diesel. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business.
folks, welcome back. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Uh, talking here today with Skip Dillon. He is a uh, a referee, a hunter, a, a retired teacher, and we're going to talk about all kinds of different things. Start first. I want to know uh, um, were you you did the state tournament this year? Congratulations! By Thank the way, you very much. The, the girls state tournament, class one A and two A. Which Correct. games did you have up there? I did the um, uh, the first day we di- i did the um who was i'm trying to i'm getting them mixed up pleasant plains you know that's the I good thing i can't remember that's a good thing <laughs> yeah as yeah. an official it's a good thing if you don't remember yeah. who you did because i mean that means you didn't really care yeah well and actually they did have me they switched games with me because uh when we had our meeting Friday, Thursday night prior to had Oakville Friday, or somebody. I I had they had me on the Carterville game, oh. which I had that super sectional down at McLeansburg. Yeah. Okay. And so they try not to put you with who you had the super sectional with yeah. on your first game yeah. up there. Well, that makes and sense. And so, but uh, did did the quarterfinal game on on uh, on Friday in the two uh, A, and then did the one A third place game on Saturday. So you were morning. you were done first thing in the morning. Yeah, on Saturday. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then you you have to you they always have an alternate yeah. also at the and so I was an alternate on the uh, night game just in the case. championship game of the. 2A. Just in case somebody gets yeah, injured or something. Hurts a knee, yeah. turn, turns an ankle or something happens like that. Happens from time to time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It happens once every whip stitch. Okay, the reason I bring that up is because at least the girls were able to complete their state tournament. Yeah. Uh, shortly after that, I guess the the, the girls the, the girls 3A and 4A also completed mm-hmm. the next weekend, right? And then that, after that, and then, then after that, all heck happened. broke loose. <laughs> yeah. and, noth- and, and nothing happened. Um, what was the uh, how did the uh, how did the IHSA inform officials and you folks that nothing was happening? Well, I, that's the power of email. <laughs> I mean, what was that? Yeah. How, what did you did you folks know before? Did officials know before everybody no, else knew? No, okay. it, it just it's when it came about. They said, you know, obviously with a, a large number of officials, they um, you know it's that's the best one, quickest yeah. way to. Um, inform you they send you an email it says check the website and then you can go on there log in in your website this type of thing and then if there is something specific and that's how they notify you how if you get assigned in yeah. postseason stuff so it's a direct email but uh, it's just a it was a mass email going out and saying were you uh, uh since you had since you were heavily involved on the girls side of it and that was also the weekend of uh boys regional finals were you you uh, probably backed out of working boys tournament well at all, or? they they back you out for you they, <laughs> they back you out <laughs> yes they did <laughs> they, they uh just they don't want to spread you too thin and yeah. and then see they only allow you to when you do uh, sign up. You know, there's actually a contract that you sign when you start doing the state series. It says that that will be the only game that you do that day. Oh, really? Yeah. So in other words, if it's, it happened to be a, a Saturday night final or something like that, I couldn't do something yeah. Saturday morning. Oh, I and see. Things. So they, they don't want they want you fresh for that game. I see. So, so yeah, you wouldn't be able to uh, yeah. work a, uh, a, a a girls game on the the weekend and then uh, and then work a regional final right. or a or yeah. a contracted game somewhere right. else. Exactly. Well, see now that makes sense. Uh, that, that makes a ton of sense. I bring all the referee and stuff to bring up this. The pandemic is going to make a few changes to uh, fall to winter sports this year, aren't they? Most definitely. How have uh, how has it worked out with athletic directors? Because let's put the IHSA out of it for now. Okay. How has the uh, rescheduling worked out with athletic directors? Have because uh, you had a full slate of games set, right? Yes. Do you still have, or have you have? Has that all been changed, or or have you had to recontract things? Um, well, how does that work? Yeah. Well, the the schools, a lot of them. Um, Really got on the ball. His, Flora was right on the ball. Bobby McNeely got right after mm-hmm. it, and and there were some others that did right after it when they found out that. See, the governor with the states, you know, they divided it up into regions. Right. So we cannot play Flora, even though we're very close proximity. We cannot play Salem. We cannot play Fairfield Cause because they're not. In their they're not. Well, no, they're not in our region. 
Not, not in the conference yeah. or the region. Right. If they're in your conference, right. you'll be able to play them, right? Exactly. Yeah. If they're, only if they're in your conference. So um, so what it did, if, if these – if Flora had Salem scheduled and mm-hmm. I had that game, yeah. obviously it had you to be canceled. You knew that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And, see the, and the other thing, too, is that they've shortened the season, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, therefore um, – See, I w- and they took the tournaments out. Yeah, you're, you're not going. There, there won't be any state championships the way it's set up uh, for the most part this year that I can tell. I mean, they have not said that, but the last regular season basketball game you can play is February, February the 13th. Yeah, that's a Saturday. Well, football practice starts Monday. Yes, yes, it, so yes it, yes, it does. How are you going to have a state tournament series? That's one other tricky thing about you know. I mean, this is all kind of up in the air. Yeah, and, 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 they, it's, and yeah. it's all it's all flexible at this point right now too. They can change. Yeah, but you bring up the dates like that, I, that makes me wonder about the football. Uh, in in the they did kind of set up football championships, just not a full state championship, didn't they? Yeah, it's it's going to be maybe a district type thing, uh, get a game or so in there. And, have four, and, have yeah. four champions in each. Uh, I, I think yeah. it's going to be. That's uh, why. And like I said, they haven't told us anything uh, uh, too specific. The only thing really that they've told us specific-wise is that, um, especially like us, well, first of all, you're going to have to use electronic whistle. Okay. And it, and it, it, okay. Now, it, t- all right, no, 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 no. Hold on. We'll stop. Stop okay. right there. Okay. Please explain to me what an electronic whistle is. I mean, you 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 can't blow it. Correct. Can you? No blowing. It's in your hand. It's on a lanyard. That it'll be around your wrist. Have you gotten yours yet? Not yet. I mean, it's on order. We have not received them yet. Uh, and then you you just hit the button, and it emits the sound. And then the thing that the I- IHSA <laughs> did warn us about is that obviously we're used to uh, going up here with a violation and all of a sudden, just like I did there, (laughs) traveling, (laughs) and that thing going to come around and smack you (laughs) in the face. Uh, Oh, heck, I didn't even think about the lanyard. Yeah, and it's not not real long, but still, when you... Uh, here I did it again. You know, you've got something like that. That's what's going to happen. You're going to be hitting yourself, or, or you may see some unorthodox mechanics i guess by officials due to the fact of it is they got this whistle still in their hand because and uh i hadn't thought of that at well, all well you know the the for basketball it's wow. it's either an open hand or a closed hand depending yeah. on whether well, yeah, it's a violation stop, stop the clock it's a violation and that's a file yeah well if you even if you're using it in this hand and then you have to do a traveling or okay now i want to do uh 23, how, you know, I got to, you know, give me skip the, if you're right-handed, you're going to want to have it your right yeah, hand, exactly. aren't you? Yeah, I, I do. I would feel comfortable that way. So um, it, it's it's going to be interesting. You so know? it's going to be something for you to get used to. Yeah, and then they also have mentioned uh, about mask. Now, on the basketball court, obviously we're normally pretty up and down, but they yeah. say, the, the statement is it, it's stated on there is, is a mask should be worn when possible so i don't know if they're going to expect they and they haven't really expanded on that but like in between quarters right are they going to want us to put the mask on to go talk to the bench well now the bench you see that's just it there's a, they have changed this basketball wise there's only going to be one captain come out and the coach and you're going to have your pre-game meeting social distanced uh I got that. Uh, this is so this, it's, it's. We're going to talk about this and a few more changes too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because because I want to ask him about uh, about uh, about masks a little bit and who's in charge. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dick and Skip Dillon. We're gonna and, and I promise you, we're gonna get to the hunt because he's got a great <laughs> trip coming up. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Please do stick around. Having car trouble, need a tow, or just some routine maintenance? Butcher Automotive in Louisville has you covered. Locally owned and operated, Butcher Automotive offers complete vehicle repair services along with tire sales and wheel alignment. They're your local hand-cooked tire and interstate battery dealer. Butcher Automotive offers free local pickup and delivery so your car can be repaired while you're at work or at home. Butcher strives to treat everyone's vehicle as their own. At Butcher Automotive, they don't want you to give them your business. They want to earn it. 
Residents of the Clay County and surrounding area have relied on Clay County State Bank for sound professional service for over 100 years. With convenient lobby and drive up hours, we are ready to serve you Monday through Saturday. We appreciate all who bank with us and we look forward to the opportunity of working with anyone who is looking for a community bank to help with their financial needs. Give us a call at 665-3314, visit us online, or stop by and see us on the square in Lusville to experience our friendly personal service. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. North Wayne Insurance Agency in Flora is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Welcome to Zane Building Center. My dad and Ryan work here. They sell lumber, paint, doors, windows, pumping, electrical, and much more. Oh yeah, they sell guns too. Zane Building Center. On Route 45 and Wolf's Hill. It's a cool place. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. I've got Skip Dillon here, and we are talking about, well, we're, we're talking about refereeing changes right now. And, and well, by the way, um, I gotta know, were there uh, uh, were there any points of emphasis this year, or did they just throw that whole thing out? <laughs> uh, because every year, every year, the National Federation mm -hmm. of Official Officials will have a uh, they'll they'll set something up as a point of interest in basketball. For instance, too much physical contact, or too yeah. much, uh, or they'll they'll change the block charge. Which they've done before. They'll change the five-second call out the out the, on the closely defended. You know what I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah. They've they changed that before. I'm guessing this year they didn't make any of those changes. And you know, I I I'm upset with myself right now since you had to bring that up because last week I did get my packet from the IHS. You haven't opened it. I opened it, but I didn't look at the sheet about the points of emphasis yet. So, you kind of got me on that I one. I didn't mean to. <laughs> uh, well, you see, I, that's, I'm, I can only assume that one of the point of emphasis, emphasis will be maybe keep kids from trash talking to each yeah. other on the court or yeah. talking to yeah. each yeah. other Never on the know. court. I mean, they, well, they, something that's social distancing as a, uh, as a, uh, as a point well, of emphasis. I, I will tell you a point of emphasis that I have been doing is this rescheduling stuff. Yes. Because um, not only do I have, you know, do my own scheduling, mm -hmm. but I'm also uh, in with, the Apollo Conference and the South Seven Conference, right. and they have assigners. Oh, so really? they assign you to the games. Well, they've also had a lot of cancellations, obviously, and things, and so they're trying to restructure all of their stuff, and then they're trying to – they're look, I've been going in and putting in my dates the, the games that I already have contracted, which that, those are changing. Yeah, every day. They, every other day or so, <laughs> if not every day. And – uh, and I still haven't heard from some schools, so I still may have more changes coming up because I think I got a couple of tournament games. I'm not a hundred percent. They're a tournament, or they may. 
and in some schools a, have, a triple double header yeah and in some schools have said uh, you know okay we're not going to have that tournament anymore but we're going to keep that date and we're going to move a game there and we still want you to referee that game and so it's uh, it's been a lot of shuffling and schedule that's that's the other tricky thing is that uh, they will permit more than one team on the premises, more than th- more than no two more, teams. Yeah, no more than three. I think, but they'll let you have just three. Yeah, and and, and it's basically a day where all three teams will play each other. So mm-hmm. you'll you'll end up having three games on the same day. Well, you won't. Yeah. I mean, you'll probably only never work know. One, but you never know. You <laughs> might work all three, or might work, and they I, might have JV as well. I've done as many as six in a day. Have you really? Yeah. How long ago was that? Uh, well, that was several years ago. <laughs> That's probably good. But, I mean, just recently, I've done uh, I've done four, but okay. you know, in the past years, but especially you know, at Christmas time, uh, where they have the tournaments going, do like the nine and the ten thirty in one tournament, and go do the one and thirty and three, four, yeah. three oh, thirty, sure. and then another it's tournament, nothing, and then the six and seven thirty. That's game nothing out of the ordinary, is it? Right? No, that's no. It's, so. That's cool. Um, I got to ask this uh, last thing then. Okay, with the new uh, rules in place uh, by the state and the IDPH, um, the IHSA really hasn't thrown out a, a bunch of new rules of their own on the social distancing in the stands and, and who's in, cha- in charge of administering. The reason I ask this is because a uh, baseball umpire on Sunday threw out a guy from – Threw a guy out of the stadium from the uh, the luxury boxes. He was yapping at him. Yeah. He's also the general manager of the team, which made it kind of. <laughs> but he wasn't wearing a mask up there. He was in the box alone, and they said they they threw him out and and said it was because he wasn't wearing a mask. My question to you is: Do you will the referees have administration over what goes on in stands, number of people, or anything like that, or are you guys hands? Full enough. We're full enough. We like I said, we got, we're the fashion police. You know, we got to make sure they don't have their shorts rolled, or or if they do have them rolled, there's no logo showing. Uh, they make sure that they've got the right stripes in the right places. You know, all that stuff that we still have to do. And uh, so they did not put any additional things yet. Uh, yet <laughs> on us for that. But, but uh, yeah, no, we're not. We're, that's going to be a, to the administration of the school. Okay. Well. That's that uh, that makes some sense. So that's 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 good to know. Um, but you know, when do they have you buy yourself a, a nice black black mask? I, I do have a black mask that I can it will wear. Match but the uniform. Yeah, uh, I'm not for sure how that's going to go, but uh, I suspect uh, it will be one of those things where you have to leave around your neck, and you'll yeah. you'll probably use it during the captain's talks yeah, or something like things that. Things like that. They they recommend anytime. Uh, that you're not active, uh, they would like for you to have a mask on if you can't be social distanced. Now, uh, I'm not for sure how that goes with players because there's going to be 10 players out there. You know, at least three or four of them is going to be in there posting up on one another. Yeah. And, and uh, just yeah, kinda, and you're going to be talking to them too. Yeah. They're going to be talking to you. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, this is this is going to be a brand new world, yeah, isn't it? it? Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. No, it's just fascinating. I tell you what, let's do. We're going to take one more quick break, and then we'll talk about another brand new world. Where are we going hunting next month, by the way? Next uh, Northwest Wyoming. What Bridger. are we looking for? Uh, elk. Chasing we are going elk. elk hunting. We'll be back here to uh, talk about that here when we return. That's Skip Dillon. I'm Bruce Dickey back here on uh, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right after this. Stick around. Make Carnaby Square in downtown Fairfield your fashion leader. We're the little boutique with the big inventory of beautiful, trendy outfits and clothing in a wide rate of your favorite name brands. And don't forget our large selection of jewelry and accessories. Carnaby Square is Southern Illinois' largest dealer of Brighton. At Carnaby Square, we take pride in our one-on-one, knowledgeable customer service and look forward to helping you create your own special look. Plus, always free gift wrapping. Find endless gift ideas 24-7 at CarnabySquare.com and on our Facebook page. Shop the fashion leader in downtown Fairfield, Carnaby Square. 
When it comes to your banking, you have as many options as colors in the crayon box. That's why you can bank your way to Topless State Bank. What works best for you may be different from what works best for your neighbor. To Topless State Bank is built to serve all your banking needs. Whether it's online banking, mobile check deposit, text banking, or just stopping in to see them at one of their three convenient locations. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender, it's to Topless State Bank. Banking made personal since 1913. Napa know-how. At Flora Auto Parts, you can count on the Napa know-how experts to have the solutions to keep you running on the road or in the field. More than just your car, your locally owned Napa store carries a large inventory of parts for farms, heavy trucks, and just about everything that moves. Experienced counter people understand your needs and are ready to help with the perfect part at a great value. That's Napa know-how at Flora Auto Parts. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Are you tired of searching high and low in those big chain stores to find what you need and deserve some royal treatment? Come to the King, Rural King, in Salem. The friendly folks at Rural King will never leave you searching for those hard to find items on your list. Farm, home, sporting, automotive, and clothing. Oh, and did I mention, we also have everything else, along with all the quality brands that you deserve. Salem Rural King is a proud retailer of the steel product line. Your searching is over when you know the King, Rural King, in Salem. Salem. In 1916, Warren Miller chose Auto Owners Insurance. Later, his son made the same choice, as did his grandson. And today, his great-granddaughter did the same. As we reflect on where we've been, we're grateful to our independent agents and to those who have put their trust in us, and to the generations who will. Auto Owners Insurance. Harrison Insurance in Louisville is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency. Morning, folks. Welcome back. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Uh, having fun talking here with Skip Dillon, and uh, we've been talking about a wide variety, of, uh, yeah, a wide variety of for sure. And, uh, and we're going to talk about one other one. Uh, we're going to talk about hunting now. As uh, Skip is a uh, w w Skip is one of the uh, people that I can ask questions about that doesn't treat me like I'm very like I'm really <laughs> tremendously stupid when I ask questions because Skip understands that I don't know these things I'm not a hunter and, I, and I'm, I'm always interested in learning new yeah. things and, and I figure that some folks out there don't know anything about hunting either you have hunted bear you've hunted uh, uh, deer, you've hunted moose. No, not yet. Not moose. Moose is on the list. Moose is not, on the list. Not yet. Elk is this time. Yeah. Have you hunted elk before? Yes, uh, five years ago. Where are we going this time? We're going. Uh, Where did we go last time? Last first? time went to Montana. We were out in the Bitterroot National Forest. Oh, uh, wow. It goes right. Up, it's right up there against uh, Idaho border. Yeah. yeah. And uh, had had a great time. And and we went out there just on our own and didn't have any knowledge of anything you know i i mean other than you uh, had your license yeah and license and kind of things and we knew this was a public area and and uh the bad part was that we were probably uh about a week earlier and that goes you know this goes from experience uh too and you know you try to schedule something we were out there two weeks and um it was just had to been a little warm and the bull elk just weren't with the cows and you know we saw cows actually had cows within uh, 30 yards you know for and we were doing hunting it with a bow so uh but we they don't have an either sex tag it was uh, strictly a bull tag so we could not uh, shoot a cow mm -hmm. but we had abilities to do that and and 
did you know so we learned a lot and uh, had had a great time doing it and then this time i'm going uh, it's northwest wyoming really uh, going into the bridger teton national forest uh just on the south edge of yellowstone there and it's a rifle hunt this time so uh, uh your chances are better with rifle just for the fact of it is you can shoot them further away than mm-hmm. you can with a with a uh is a, it bull a, elk again this time yes yeah, strictly bull and uh, so uh, then, uh, now folks wonder. Uh, folks might be wondering why are you doing going elk hunting? There's, you know, why I walk into the club, I see the thing on the wall. It's <laughs> gorgeous. Why would you do such a thing? Uh, but I mean, there's a good size herd up there. That you know, oh yeah, th- th- and th- these are cold for purposes. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's the same, same way here in Illinois. That's they, right. They only give out so many white-tailed deer tags, and and it's, they regulate the population. If not, then you get devastated by disease. Yeah. You know that's what nature does to help regulate the herd if it's over right. and and you're not and if it's oversized and, and it's not being harvested as we call it to uh to regulate it so therefore uh you know that's that's what they want they want a good healthy herd and regulate it by hunting so how big of a uh, of an area will you uh, cover here in uh in in wyoming then because it's uh, i've been to wyoming it's big wide open <laughs> it's, space. yeah it's, it's big yeah really <laughs> it's, it's, it's um, not, you're not going into the, the 20 acres about out there and putting up a tree stand and right. uh, getting ready for a deer are right. you this no. is not what you're doing no this is a, a lot of spot and stalk uh, we will be on horseback daily and and cover many miles on horseback are you? so uh, uh when we get you know we get them we'll spot them uh and then get off the horses and then make a stalk to a shooting spot where we can uh get to the elk what do you look for in a shooting spot uh you like a nice flat spot maybe you can lay down take kind of take cover because in cover you you, you don't want um you, You'd prefer not to shoot at an angle like that, where your body is all angled and or up. So you know you'd try to, yeah. You the the mountain might be that way, but it the yeah. That's the what more, I I played. I now, now skip. I played golf yeah, on a lot. Yeah, of, <laughs> yeah. a lot of uneven the, surfaces. The more, sometimes you can't help uh, it. And and that's right. And that, <laughs> that's one of the things that when you do go out something like this, and, and that's what I've been doing for quite a while now is preparation. Uh, I, I I'm go shoot. I, I I'm shooting. Just I throw my backpack down and lay down and shooting off my backpack, shooting sticks. You know I try to go through different shooting scenarios that I might be put in, and and you know just try to prepare yourself the best for it because you definitely when you're in the optimal position, shooting position and comfortable, mm-hmm. you're obviously more accurate than if yeah. you are laying down twisted around a tree yeah. and you know stuff like that. So you've got to practice, I guess, those odd shooting positions because obviously it's not you're not going to find that. But the more level spot that you can be on, yeah, you're going to be shooting up or down. But if if your body's not contorted like yeah, crazy, I mean, if you're if you're if you're if you're straining to, yeah. to uh, keep your position, you're less uh, against accurate. Gravity, and, you're, yeah. it's, it's going to mess up your. Yeah, you're less accurate. Up. So it's a lot of preparation. How. Um, it seems like, and I'm, I'm using this as a, a, a I'm using local uh, uh, white-tailed deer just to, because that's what people around here are familiar with. How um, how more how much more um, uh, aware of their situation are elk? I mean, can you make a noise and and uh, in, mm. uh, in hunting an elk? Because you can if you make a noise uh, with uh, with a deer around, they're going to hear you from uh, yeah. uh, several yards, several hundred yards, yeah. maybe. Can you do the same? Is is an elk the same way? An elk's the same way, and uh, and it's it's even their their smell is just as good or better than a white tail, and that's the their number one defense uh, against predators and things is their smell. And and the thing is, is that they can smell a long way, and when you're six or seven hundred yards away, you can get winded pretty easy believe it or not really yeah uh, with the elk and and so you've really got to pay attention to the thermals and uh in the weather the normally they say uh, sun up the thermals are up high but when that means so it's, you're talking it's about taking, the thermal uh, wind yeah about the scent the scent is, it's going up in the mornings and then it's going down in the evenings thermal up or sun up thermal up sun down thermal down so it'll, if you're hunting 
in the evening and it's cooling down it takes that your scent down more than up so you've got to use that to your advantage if if it's morning obviously you want to try to stay above the elk shooting down because your thermals are staying up yeah and just the opposite in the evening i had no and idea so i mean that that, that uh yeah, it, it, out in the mountains and stuff, it's 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 awful tricky, and and, I, you, and I'm not I'm not a professional at it just yet either. So I'm so still, are they so then are they used to the horses because you're going to be on horse? Oh yeah, back. yeah. The horses, uh, you know, we'll, when we spot them, we're we're going to spot them quite a ways away, and then we'll just leave the horses there and then go on foot from there. You'll go on foot for another thousand yards, fifteen hundred. Yeah, yards. never know. We'll see how far it goes. Cause you just you, hope you, your horse doesn't run off? Well, you, tie, tie him up. Tie, tie him to him a up, tree. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we take off, and you and if that elk happens to move one direction or another, you may have to go totally the different direction to, to circle around him. Or Now, this is you're, this is fascinating to me. You, you've you've worked this out. There are there are only so much, so many number of hunters per, uh, permitted on here, aren't there? Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, in this particular area, they only allow 12 hunters a year. Oh, really? And so, and, and we're talking... Um, well over a million acres so yeah. it's not like uh it's over hunted or and that they're used to people or how do you get on that like list uh, well it's uh that's a good question <laughs> it takes time and you yeah. gotta uh actually we had a, a a person out there that does this as a career as a prof- profession, profession yeah. and and gets us in we we actually had to put in and apply for this two years ago really and so it's just it, it it's not a quick thing you know they're especially and then when if you want to go to some areas in some states uh there have been people who have had to put in 20 22 years wow. before they get a tag um these aren't guided, are they? This this one we're going on. This one, this is. one is a guided uh, hunt. Uh, the actually, I kind of uh, a former student player of mine when I was up at Beardstown, kind of got it set up for his fiftieth birthday. He's yeah, I, I was obviously young up there, and he was in. He yeah, well, was in. He's starting fifty younger, now. Yeah. yeah, he he was in high school when I was up there as a young yeah. young guy, and uh, he kind of got it set up, and and then uh, just through communication on Facebook, I he said he was going, and I said, hey, congratulations, you have a great time, and he sent me a note back, says, hey, you want to go? And now that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I said, okay, get on, you know, and he had, that, had it that's set That's keeping up. a good relationship yeah. with your former players. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> he had it set up with, and it was with a guide, and, and like I said, we'll be horseback and in staying in wall tents up on the mountain, somewhere between. I mean, we'll be seven to ten thousand feet uh, elevation, and and uh, how long? All right, how long have you been preparing for that seven to ten thousand feet? You've got to do a little physical preparation oh, yeah. for that too. Scott. Well, after basketball season was over uh, this February, I um, normally I take a before I do anything, I'll take a week or two off just yeah. because i've been running up and down the floor six yeah. nights a week yeah and uh didn't take any time off and started hitting the pavement and did you really and started running and uh uh i did and then i started i thought well i'm going to be on the hills and i i started doing inclines on a treadmill for pretty steep inclines and going for 20 minutes this or keeping so keeping you in great health then. and uh the the thing was oh I, I got a lot of tendonitis in one knee yeah so uh i had to take a few weeks off and then uh uh i got I, instead of putting the knee back to test there i had to i got i've been bicycling i, I went 12 miles this morning on the bicycle and i keep it and i got a 24 speed bicycle and i do it uh, on the 22nd gear which is second from the hardest wow and i do up and down the hills and i don't change gear so i no kidding i'm really trying i'm training and hard and and stuff so uh trying to yeah and it is uh, the information that we got from out of there it says in big bold print on the paper it says this is a physically demanding hunt so uh see i've I've run out of time i was going to ask you the last question how do you pull the doggone elk out of there (laughs) those things are a thousand pounds quarter them up bring them out a quarter at a time is that right yeah wow yeah well i gotta tell you skip 
fascinating day. Thank you so much for being on here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Do you mind coming back whenever you, uh, because I'm going to want to hear how this hunt went. And and you can come back on and tell me all about it this fall. I'd be more than happy to. Well, that's outstanding. That's Skip Dillon. Uh, I'm Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope uh, hope we covered something you were interested in. (laughs) We hit a few things there. We hit a few things. Uh, We'll see you all next time. Have a great day.